Ahoy friends, welcome to Building the Alpha Dory. I'm Dan, and this is a project to build a rowing, sailing dory in the style it was used around Marblehead in the 1890s, 1900. Anyway, uh, we're scarfing up uh, a number one plank today, and maybe going to pull some more planks out of the wood pile. So let's get to it. The uh, Rose of Sharon's are really blooming these days. If you've got one of these trees, you're lucky. They're delicious flowers. Alright, so we uh, cleaned up the scarf joints for the plane uh, last video. And yeah, coming back to them, they look pretty good. Uh, the, I'd say maybe the one thing you want to watch out for on your scarf joints is, uh, is if the middle of the scarf, the center section, is higher than the rest. You want to really make sure you're getting, getting into that wood in the center section of the scarf with your plane. Uh, because that will tend to lift the edges. When you're putting the nails in, you're really putting a lot of pressure on the center section. So if it's a little bit hollow, uh, the nails will you know, pull it down nice and tight. Whereas if it's a little high, you're not going to be putting pressure around the very edges of the scarf. Where uh, you want a nice tight bond, because if, if a scarf was going to fail, it would probably fail along a poor glue joint along an edge or it'd start to lose weakness and then it would kind of propagate into the scarf from there. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's get gluing these things. I want to be careful with that feather edge and how I swing it around the shop. here. Uh, yeah, we try to use as little disposable stuff as possible, you know, within reason. Try and keep stuff out of landfills and uh, you know, it's crazy, the most expensive stuff is the stuff you throw away. A lot of these planes I bought for uh, uh, anywhere between $25 and $75. But, uh, you know, the ones that I didn't inherit. But I've had them for, well, at least uh, a number of them for 15, 20 years now, at least. So, the price of them compared to the price I sp amount of money I spend on wax paper or, uh, or especially sandpaper. Gosh, that stuff's the most expensive thing in the shop, pretty much. You throw it away and it just fills a landfill and takes money out of your pocket. Then again, it doesn't pay to sit there rubbing a piece of wood with a dull piece of sandpaper either, which is why I try and use a plane whenever I can. Yeah, a plane will, plane will pay for itself many times over just in the sandpaper you save because of it. Uh, 
Pipe Bond 3, which is over here. So I got pretty much the uh, same setup as the as the uh, same setup as the um, as the plywood scarf. Just scarfing real wood now. <laughs> um, okay. Make sure I got my wax paper and easy reach. Stir. Oh, let's see how this goes. Yeah, it worked great on the um, on the plywood. So I couldn't be happier there. Um, this is my first boat scarfing with the tight bond. I'd, uh, I'd used, um, you know, what would you have called it? West system for the scarf joints on Centennial. And then I uh, went to tight bond for pretty much everything else. And, uh, yeah, Pretty much so impressed with it on throughout Centennial that I was willing to try it on the scarfs for uh, this Alpha. There's a saw, sounds like. So the uh, pine's soaking this up pretty good, definitely a good sign, but uh, the one thing I don't want to do with this uh, tight bond is let the glue, let the joint dry out before, you know, before it's really, uh, you know, you don't want a glue starved joint. Is, uh, before the glue is hardened, you don't want the joint to dry out. You want it to harden with a little bit of glue in there. Nice tight joint, sure, but you want it to be, uh, and you want it to really soak into the wood and not run out of soaking power before it, uh, before you run out of glue. You want to squeeze some out on the joints if possible, just to know you've got enough in there. It's going to be enough. Any 
can clean your fingers off pretty good on the uh, edge of the bottle too. You don't waste a lot that way. Yeah, and then the last, so the last thing I just did was put a little puddle of glue sort of right in the middle of the of the um, of the scar, so that if it's uh, you know when you nail it down and it squeezes out all that puddle will squeeze out along, and if it encounters any dry areas, you know it'll soak right in there. So what I want to do is air on this side with the wax paper because here's where the glue is going to leak out and the board's going to get glued to the floor. And I'll, uh, I can see the edge of the scarf that I cut. Set that on there. And let's see. Grab this guy. Straight edge, steel. Make sure that I'm close with my uh, height from one piece of wood to the other once there's pressure on it. All right. It doesn't really matter if there's no pressure on it. You gotta put a little pressure on it to see if you're little tiny bit high over here but just so little that I'm not not gonna worry about it now I'm lining it up at the scarf what I'll do is I'll put a nail in with it lined up it's looking good one more check on front to back because once we put the nail in there we can't I'm not going to get much shift front to, you know, sliding it this way and that way as far as the height of the scarf. Wax paper. So I'm going to put three along the top edge and uh, looks good. Some glue just squeezed, squeezed out. Now what I'll do is I'll go back along the board with one nail in. I'm going to eyeball the... Uh, all the angle So, as I'm eyeballing that, I'm re realizing that the, uh, that the sawmill did not cut a straight line along the, um, along the edge of the board. So that's uh, not really an issue because I can clean it up you know, quite easily on the bench, straighten that line out. Um, once the plank is glued up, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just kind of averaging that line so it'll come out to where I want to cut a straight line.
still looking good back here. The, the uh, nails, the pieces of wood with these nails on them are uh, pretty dangerous, so you gotta keep good track of where you set them down. You don't want to nail on a needle on one of these things. So you can see I got a lot more, uh, a lot more scarf to nail with these, uh, with this joint than I did with the last one because the last one was the garboard. And the garboard was a fairly small, it was only like four inches wide. Now I'm up to eight or nine inches here. So. You know, making sure that you're getting these down nice and tight and that there's a little bit of glue squeeze out there. Looks okay. I might try and put another nail in there, we'll see. Okay, looking good actually right here. So that's eight and a half inch plank. to the next which is pulling a few more boards out of that wood pile yeah, so, uh, I've been posting a number of videos from the small reach which was a big success this year small reach to Gata. Um, Facebook page, they're like, oh, I'll go next year, you know, I can't wait to make it. It's too busy this year or whatever. It's like, you know, guys, it's been going on for 15 years. If you haven't made it now, then... <laughs> yeah, so this is the last year. I think a couple people actually uh, put in the effort to show up. Just because it was the last year, you know, everyone kind of wanted to, uh, to kind of pay their respects and, you know, see it off in a good way, so that was a good thing. We had uh, probably some of the worst weather of any small reach. Um, it wasn't as bad as a storm that we had one year over at a wooden boat magazine. And, uh, but it was pretty, uh, pretty quiet as far as the wind goes. Thursday was okay. And, um, and Saturday actually turned out all right. But, you know, compared to a typical small reach, which is three days of some of the best sailing you've ever encountered, it was uh, definitely a little bit light on the wind and heavy on the uh, rain. On Friday, um, 
end up going out for a, for a row in no wind and quite a bit of rain uh, Friday morning uh, aboard Alyssa. And then, uh, and then Friday afternoon is when it really poured. And that was, uh, yeah, that was pretty wild. I was glad I'd bought a, a brand new blue poly tarp to put over the tent. Because I would have been soaked otherwise. Okay, so. I can see the boards I want to get at. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, I actually I got a number of these boards. I'm only gonna use three of them. So I got one, two, three, four, five. I got five, six of these boards. Six of the same board cut from the same tree. So it doesn't matter too much which one I grab. I wanna I don't wanna check them over, but they're all gonna be pretty similar because they're yeah, you know, they're cut right side by side each other. Got to get the breaking bar to get into that pile. So I took one out of one out of this side of the pile, so I want to try and take one out of the other side of the pile. It's not going to be at the exact same height, but the uh, the sticking will bend and adjust to uh, <coughs> to compensate. All right, here's another one. Another one of those same boards. What I could do is put another board into its place. Alright. <clears throat> 
Nice to have a pile of not too big so that you can do this with it. You gotta miss multiple piles, you know. Run out of room quick, but Just uh, kind of in effect putting a forklift fork in you know, one of them, human powered, <coughs> into, each, uh, into each side and just giving it a little, taking the pressure off it so I can snake that out. <coughs> same fractures in this area where that uh where that um crotch was in the tree but nowhere as near as bad on this floor <coughs> and there's actual wood down there as opposed to uh as opposed to tree bark so this is a good one uh we'll definitely Keep the both of these out. So this is a good one too. They're both nicer than that first board, so it's good we use the first board on the shortest plank. Because we could use the least out of it, so. Alright. One, two. <clears throat> and then it really depends whether we take a third one out or not. Uh, what we end up doing with, with one of these two, we'll see about the next plank, see if we can get a plank out of one of these. If not, we'll have to use half of one of these and then a longer, uh, a longer board. So see if there's enough length of good wood in these to, to do the uh, number two planks. But I really won't know that until I like start cutting into it and planing it. So we'll hold off on yanking out a third, a third uh, one of these big boys for the moment. And when I do take it out, I think I'll take it out on this side because the whole pile is slightly, slightly tilted this way. I think it's just because the uh, the ground on the uh, driveway is crowned in this direction, which is fine. I mean, it's nowhere near tipping over, so. All right, cool. All right, so what I'm gonna be doing next is uh, splitting these two planks, just like we did the first one. Cut them right down the middle. And then, uh, yeah, next video hopefully we'll be able to uh, be uh, jointing them and uh, maybe even getting ready to scarf them up and see if we need another plank out of the pile to do the uh, ones and twos or not. So yeah, anyway, catch you later.
right, so there we go. The uh, two planks, two boards into four, and uh, hopefully get two planks out of them. And before I go, oh my gosh, I just got a feast on these delicious and nutritious hibiscus blossoms. Just can't let these go to waste. Thanks for stopping by building the Alphadori. See you next time.